Okay, in this set of lessons, we're gonna do forms in HTML, which are pretty cool because they let you do some interactive things with the page. So as usual, we'll start with the basic HTML document. I have this saved as form.html, uh, which I also have open here in the browser, though there's nothing there. And now we're gonna actually start putting in the form. So if you remember when we did lists, we would have the OL tag, and then inside that we'd have the list items and then end the ol tag. In forms, we have a similar structure. There's a form tag and an end form tag, and then inside the form, you actually put the form widgets. And so, of course, that lets us ask, what's a form in HTML? Well, you run into forms all the time on the web. This is one, for example, uh, where you have spaces that you can type information. Uh, any of these widgets here, are part of a form. This pull down menu is part of the form and so is the button. So any of these kind of interactive widgets are part of forms in HTML. So if we want to make one of those, you start with the form tag and the end form tag and let's get some basics down and then we'll fill in some details. Pretty much all of the types of things that you can interact with in a form are done with the input button. So you have input and then that has some kind of type. Let's start with type equals text and in this case, that's going to be a text box, but the type is the attribute that we change, and that will change the type of widget that the person can interact with. So here we'll put that, we'll come back here and reload our page, and there we have our text box. There's nothing else, there's just that box that we can type in, but that's the start of a form. Okay, so we can have different types of inputs. Uh, they get spaced just like anything else, so we have to put in tags in order to get them spaced out. There's input type equals password. Input type equals button. Input type equals submit, which does a submit button. And we'll talk about these all a little bit more in depth in a minute. There's input type equals hidden, which you won't be able to see. And if we save this and reload it, we just get all of these widgets here. So that's interesting, but none of them are labeled and that's important. So let's go in and add labels to all of these. Um, so we'll just describe what they are. It's a common thing when students are starting with this that they think the type or other attributes they put in here will show up next to um, the elements, but they won't you actually have to put text in order to have something show up. So if we save that and reload, now we can see we have a label next to each of these. So input type equals text, looks like this, you get a text box. Password is basically the same as text, except instead of seeing the letters, you just see the little dots. Input type equals button creates a button that you can click. It doesn't do anything by default. Uh, if you learn JavaScript, which I'm teaching a one credit class on that too, you can put some JavaScript in to make the button do something. And I'll show you a quick example of that in this lecture. Uh, the submit button will submit your form. By default, it says submit query. And if you click that, in this case, it just reloads our page. I'll show you how to fix that in a bit. Uh, and then hidden, there's nothing next to it because that kind of secretly embeds information in your form. So those are some basics. There's also input type equals radio, which will make a radio button and input type equals checkbox, which makes a checkbox. So let's take a quick look at those. So radio button is like that, checkbox is like this. Those are usually used in groups, so you have multiple things that you can pick with a radio button or with a checkbox. Radio buttons, you can pick one thing, and if you pick a different one, it pops out the original button, so it allows you to only select one. Checkbox lets you check multiple things in the set. There are also a couple types of inputs that don't use the input tag. There's text area that has a start and an end tag. And that will give you this kind of multi-line box and there's ways to control how that looks. And there's one more, which is select and this gives you a pull down menu. So let's just create a couple options here. 
So this gives you a pull down menu. It has a structure similar to the lists. Those started with an OL or a UL tag and then had list items. This starts with a select tag and has options, but very similar structure. Uh, and if we take a quick look at that, here you get the pull down menu. Okay, so those are the basics of how you create the different widgets, but there's a lot of other options that we have to talk about with the forms. Okay, so the first is in the form tag itself. There's two attributes that you have to put in there. One is called method and one is called action. So let's start with method. Method describes how the information from the form is gathered up and sent off somewhere to be processed. There's two options, post and get. We're going to use post and frankly we're not going to talk too much about these. Uh, they're more advanced things with how the web works and how data is sent back and forth. So we'll use post, just make sure you put that in there and that'll be fine. The second is action. I'm going to drop this down another line just so we can see it clearly. Action is set equal to the URL and I've pasted one in here. This is the URL of the program that's going to handle and process the form. So for example if you had a form that allowed you to fill it out and email something the action would point to the program that would take the data from the form and actually send the email. Uh, if you're doing online ordering, for example, you add the stuff to your cart, you go through the checkout, and at each step there's a program that processes what you've put in, makes sure your address is valid, your credit card's valid, and then actually submits the order. Um, these programs are called CGIs, and you'll see this actually has CGI at the end. That is a program that can be written in lots of different languages. Uh, I write mine in Perl, and I actually teach a class where you can learn that, INFM 743, if you want to come over and learn to do the back end. We're not going to learn how to make any of these. Uh, they tend to be custom written for the specific form that they're processing. But what I've written here, and you'll find this URL posted in the notes for today, is a CGI that basically just shows you what was typed into your form. So for all of the forms that you do in this class, I want you to have method equals post and action equals this URL. And then when somebody submits the form, when they click the submit button, you'll be able to see what data was in the form. So if we save that, we'll see that it doesn't change what appears here at all. Uh, but if we type some text and click submit, now you see it actually goes to this reflector, but nothing is there. Now we had stuff in our form, so why isn't there anything there? Well, there's other stuff that we have to actually add into the form itself. For all of these different types of input, the way people can give us information, we've specified types. Here we haven't specified any attributes, but there's an important attribute that you have to have on all of these, which is name. Name describes what information is going to be typed in to that box. Um, so we could call this our test text box and we could put in here PW you can call these whatever you want uh, submit we don't need to put one because nobody's putting any information in there though you could for hidden it's really important to have the name because that's hidden information And let's just go through and fill them all out. And even in the text area and the select, you put names. Now, I could call it the same thing. So I could call this text area, even though this is a text area. I could call this password if I wanted to. I'm making them separate just so we don't get confused about what does what. The type is what controls how it appears. The name is describing the data there. And you need that name because you can have multiple text boxes. Uh, for example, if you're filling out your name, address, zip code, city, state, etc. Lots of those are text boxes and so you need to know what box each person typed which information into. Now, if we take this, where we have names added to all these fields, reload it, and we'll type a couple things in here. Check this. 
and click Submit. And so here we finally see the output from our form. These lines each start with the name that we gave to the form and then what comes afterwards is what was typed into the box. Now that thing that's typed into the box is called the value and we can see for my hidden data there isn't one. Now there's no way for people to type things into the hidden form field. So how do we get a value? Well, you actually use the value attribute. So we could put in some hidden value and if we save that, reload our page and submit it, now you can see that hidden value comes through. And in fact, you can use values on any of these fields. So we could say value, enter your name on the text field, and that'll give us a default uh, text for that field. So if we reload, here we see enter your name is now in the text field. The person can delete that and type something that they want. Okay, so every field has to have a name and they can have a value. Generally, that value is going to be the default that appears in the box. Uh, we need to have names and values for radio buttons and check boxes, but they're done a little bit differently there. So radio buttons, if you remember, allow you to pick one thing out of a list. Uh, so you normally have multiple radio buttons. So let's change this one that we have. And for our radio buttons, we'll say favorite food and we'll give people some options. So input type equals radio. And then we're going to give it a name. This will be fave food. That needs an equal sign. And then we need to give a value for each of the foods that we're going to let them pick from. So let's say we'll say pizza. And remember, that's just going to show a radio button is not going to show any text. Uh, and if, in fact, if we just reload that really quick, you'll see we just get the radio button. It does not say pizza next to it. If you want that labeled, you actually have to type it yourself. And we need to format these just like we'd format anything else. So we have to put in our own line breaks. Now, if we're going to give them a few options to pick from, for the second option, we start the same way. We do input type equals radio. And then we get to the name. Now the names need to be unique. Every field has to have a different name. Things will get screwed up if they don't. But the exception is checkboxes and radio buttons. For the radio buttons to work so one will pop out when you pick the other, we need to know that they're part of the same group and we do that by giving them the same name. But we change the value. So if we have pizza, let's put broccoli as another option. And let's just give them those two. So they have the same name, which is a big no-no for everything else, but it's required for radio buttons, but different values. So when we reload over here, if I click broccoli, watch the pizza button, it'll pop out. If I click pizza, the broccoli button will pop out. That's because they're part of the same group. Okay, uh, so the formatting here is not very nice, but you see the function of those buttons. Let's just put that in there to make it a little bit nicer. And you'll see if I submit this, uh, I have pizza checked and pizza shows up as my favorite food. All right, for checkboxes, we would do it the same way. You give all of them the same name and you have a different value so you know what it means when they've ticked that box. I'm going to put another paragraph in there just so the formatting is a little nicer. Now, you can also use the value on the button field and the submit field, and in that case, it's going to change the text that appears. So if we go back to our page here, you see our button is blank. Our submit button says submit query. If we add a value to the button that says click me, save that and reload. Now we have some stuff there and we can click that button. Nothing happens. For the submit, we can add value equals submit form. And whatever we put in those quotes is what's going to show up on the button. So it starts off with submit query as default, but if we reload, it says submit form. You can make those say anything you want. So that's the basics of forms. Uh, like I said, you can have multiple forms of each type or multiple inputs of each type. So here we have our first text box that says enter your name. We could put in another type equals text. Um, let's do name equals last name and we'll put in 
some default text. And then you'll see we have our two text boxes. That's totally fine. Okay. Uh, like images and anything else in HTML, you need to do the spacing, the paragraphs, the breaks. You can put these in lists if you want to. You can format them however you like. The next lesson we do, we're going to learn about tables, which does give a nice way to kind of format and line things up in a pretty clean way. Uh, but that's it. That's the basics of forms. Now, I promised I would teach you one little bit of JavaScript. This is not anything that you have to program, but just so you can kind of see how it works. So let's separate out our input type equals button here. I'm going to bump this down. OK, so the button, remember, if we click on it, it just lets you click it. But you can put some JavaScript in there. So we can do this attribute on click, which means when the person clicks it, you're going to execute the JavaScript that comes between these quotes. So we could do alert. Thanks for clicking. Notice that I used single quotes in here, and I have double quotes on the outside. If I were to put this text in double quotes, uh, the browser would think it was ending the alert. It would match it here, so I have to separate the quotes. Alert brings up a little pop-up that shows the message, um, so let's just take a look at what it does. So if I click the button, now I get this alert. Thanks for clicking, and then it goes away. There's very complicated stuff that you can do. Again, if you want to learn JavaScript, I have a one-credit class on that. But that's an example of how you can start adding some interactivity in with your forms. In general, forms are pretty useful. They're cool. They let people interact with your page. Uh, and that's it. That's the basics of them. You'll see the notes are a little bit more in-depth. They've got some more options and ways that you can mess around with the sizes of your text areas, the length of your text boxes. But this gives you a good start on how to make a basic form in HTML.